watching thank you for watching hope your day is going well um well, how do i start this so i just heard about jenny Mai and uh young jeezy about two hours ago i've been watching some of the gossip channels talking about it and stuff and um y'all don't get mad at me but let me go ahead and get the offensive part out early i'm gonna need okay so jenny Mai. Uh, what is that little light skinned girl named Danny Lay? And it's somebody else y'all gotta let the hurt go for. Um, oh, well, I'll go to the Kardashians, but I'll leave that alone. Black women and a couple gay guys, because that's when, when you watch gossip and stuff, it's black women and gay guys. And I'm sure some people in the white community, I don't know how many people in the white community care. The Jenny Maya and Jeezy are getting divorced or about the black community stuff. That's kind of rare. So black women and a few gay guys. Y'all got to let this hurt go. Before I get into the video, y'all got to let this hurt go. And what I'm specifically referring to are two things off, off the top that I'm thinking of. Those two things are every chance y'all get. Every time I hear something about Danny Lay, in the news, which the last thing we heard was that she got into that drunk driving accident, hit the guy and fled the scene, which is horrible. And I don't know all the details, but if that's apparently what happened, that's horrible. What's the first thing the majority of black women are in the comments saying? Um, was, uh, yellow bone is what he want. Or when um, Danny Lay, oh, and my fan is on again, shit. I'm sorry about the fan noise. I forgot when Danny lay in that situation with, uh, what is that boy's name? That little rapper boy. The one she got a baby with. When he clowned her on that video, that was a hot mess. I don't think I did a video about that. But y'all just obsessively, yellow bone is what he want. And just everybody kept saying that. And it, people took such pleasure out of him clowning her. When in fact... Yellow bone was what he wanted. He was that was a fetish that many black men have. And black women, we we get so much pleasure when we see lighter skin or racially ambiguous women get humiliated by black men. We take too much pleasure out of it. It, it gives off a little bit of low self esteem to be so excited to see a black man clown their preference, as y'all like to say. You shouldn't be that excited. I understand you're like, look how he did them. Da, da, da. I get it. But some of the but the deep levels of disturbing joy some of y'all take out of it gives off a little bit of low self-esteem. You're a little too excited. Um, the situation with Danny Lay and that guy getting hit uh, or hurt, the drunk driving situation, the majority of y'all seem more concerned with yellow bone is what he want than the person who got hit. Somebody got hit. And people are in the comments more concerned with their get back. For yellow bone is what he want. That's sick. That's sick. So let that hurt go of the yellow bone is what he want. Let that dark skinned sisters, let that hurt go. Stop lingering on that shit. Every time. That's just something I need to say. The second one. Jenny Mai, the person we're talking about today. Yes, God damn. Jenny Mai said like four years ago, she likes her dark meat. She likes dark meat sometimes, but she likes it on the side. Basically, she was basically saying publicly, she does the white, like chicken breast, white meat. But then on the side, she likes a little dark meat. We know she said that. She said it so many fucking years ago. Sometimes in a black community, the shit that we think we should be allowed to say and people get over and we think because we're black we should be able to say anything and then people need to get over it in one day but then if you're another race and you say something you we just never let that shit go not all of us and if you think i'm talking about all of us you, you're stupid so i can't i can't help you but y'all let that hurt go 
all in the comments, all over her page. I was looking at her page today. She, of course, she ain't said nothing about it. This woman is a businesswoman. She's a multi-business entrepreneur. She got shit going on. All that nigga shit that I read in the comments. She married a, a very business-oriented, self-proclaimed street dude. But Jean Ma ain't no street person. She's very business-oriented. So, I would be surprised if she brings it up on her page. Maybe she will. Probably on her YouTube channel. But y'all was in those comments clowning. Bringing that old shit up from like six years ago. Black women. And it was black women. Y'all let that hurt go. That's my only two things before I get into this that I want to say. Y'all are too stuck on that. It comes off. A little bit if you really think about it as us having low self-esteem to be that excited to be still bringing that shit up move on there's that and just the excitement period about oh another preference got dumped a baby girl's a baby girl now has a broken family what, what what's exciting about this this is horrible but yeah now let me get into my commentary in a sense, this is a situation of, I didn't mean to just laugh like, like that right now, but yeah, this very well might be a situation of Jenny Mai getting the same black men black women get. Yes, that is a real thing. Those other two points I just made in the beginning for the past six minutes were just two points, Danny Lay, Jenny Mai, those two things they said, y'all just gotta let, it's just, it's sad that people still bring that up. It's kind of pathetic. That's all I'm saying. But, on a other note, yes, it does appear that she got the same black man black women get. The problem uh, with that thing, with as far as who black men some, 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 sometimes can fetish, sometimes can fetishize. Like I said, I've seen black men fetish, fetishize. God damn, mixed race, racially ambiguous women. Since I was a child, I remember being seven years old. I'll never forget. I, I don't know if the girl was a track. We know we were children. But those black boys at seven years old, watching them go lose their mind over a little mixed girl. Watching it all throughout junior high. And us little black girls, just as cute as we could be. They were obsessed with those little mixed girls or they're racially ambiguous. So it starts very early. I, I remember seeing it so early. So it's just, that's very layered in our community where that starts and ends and all that. But anyway, I think probably for Jeezy, I'm not speaking on his behalf or Jenny Mai's behalf. I don't have nothing against young Jeezy. I think he's great. Tell I've seen him like three times in concert. I think Jenny Mai is great. I like her. I like them both. I, who, I don't know these people, but I like them. I like what I see. I think young, young Jeezy probably, even himself, he probably thought, I think it was a level of fetishism, fetish, fetishizing that different race and the excitement and feeling like it's an upgrade to a degree. I do believe some of that was happening. But Jenny Mai is an upgrade, period. Regardless of her being Asian, black, white, biracial, Jenny Mai is a successful woman in her own right who does really well for herself. Really hard worker, really determined, really somebody to look up to. Is this boy driving with a shirt? Really somebody to look up to. If you want to be an entrepreneur, she's always on her hustle. Very commendable. So I don't. So Jenny Mai wasn't just a fetishized upgrade. She's an upgrade for any man, in my in my opinion. See, I can I can look at the whole picture. I, I'm not I'm not in a sense, I don't walk through life necessarily fixated on race. I can look at the whole thing and not I'm black, but I'm not obsessed with everything in my life being tied up with being black. I'm black, but my mind has no color. And the way I process thoughts, the way I try to move through life, the way I view people, people who I can admire, things of that nature. I don't obsessively put it in a little box of just black. So she's somebody to admire to me from a business standpoint. Maybe in her personal life, she's just not successful. Maybe there's something about her that after a while, they just don't want to deal with. I don't know. We know Who knows? But um, I think Jeezy thought, in my opinion, I don't know. I think he thought he was going to treat her better. 
I think part of fetishizing racially ambiguous women, I think many times the black man thinks he is going to treat her better. I think he puts her, he puts, they, they do put them on a pedestal and they think, I'm going to treat this one better. Uh, I like her more, which I don't think he necessarily did so-called like her more than anybody else he's been with. He just had more of a fetish. I think it was definitely a fetish tied up into it. I think it was him knowing she had liked him from back then and her, I, I'm sounding like a little bit hypocritical now, hypocritical now, but I do think it was him seeing her as an upgrade, but also liking being attached to a racially ambiguous woman. I, I think that was exciting to him. I don't think he probably did think about the ins and outs of what this marriage is going to involve. Um, I am dealing with the per I think his other ex was his African lady. I think she did pretty well for herself. I might be wrong about that, but I thought that that's what it was. Um, I think he was looking at a lot of surface too and, and visual and got really tantalized and turned on by that and didn't look deep before he leaked. And then he got in there. I think another thing, because they had been together for what, about a year before they got married. I think culturally, I've dated and racially since I've been dating and it's not the skin tone that goes wrong it's not you look at each other's skin and say I don't like your skin anymore that's 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 an, I've never heard of that happening it's almost always striking cultural differences where is she from she's not from the Philippines she's from Vietnam she's somewhere like that somewhere in there and of course he's from where he's from here I forgot where he's from I don't know where he's from America but like he grew up a certain way certain culture and she grew up a certain way in certain culture and those cultures come together and it's exciting at first but over time that shit starts getting on your nerves who knows from what I can tell in that culture Jenny Maya's culture there's a lot of time spent with family I'm not saying black people don't spend time with their family but those in that culture from what I've seen it's an extreme amount of time spent with family. Like, them, it's uh, always at the house. And I'm not saying we don't do that, but we do have a certain point in the day where I was like, okay, time to go home. From what I've seen in that culture, there, no, there's no time to go home. No. <laughs> so, you know, cultural things and things that they do with certain customs and the customs he comes from, probably differed greatly. Jeezy is always on tour. I saw him, I've seen him twice, I saw him twice last year. And that was one of like 10 times he was in just Dallas. That guy is always on tour. He's very busy. Um, a part of me thinks he might be used to being with somebody who he can maybe probably get away with certain things with. And she was so admiring of him. I think he probably got into that marriage and found out it was some things that she wasn't going to go for. I think he may have thought culturally he he may be able to get away from stuff and then found out, no, 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 you can't do that. So, you know, who knows? But I think he went into it. I think being color struck, as they say, definitely uh, equated into him getting into that marriage. Jenny Mai, I had to say the same thing for her. I think it was some color struck. I think it was maybe some BBC got up in there. Uh, and his fetishizing of her probably made her feel really good. He probably, because with her being with a white man, a white man is not going to fetishize and dote over an Asian woman like a black man would. Now, in the end, maybe the white man's going to have more financial resources, which her ex-husband did not. But in general, the white man's going to have more financial resources and, and he can take care of you better financially. That's just reality. I'm not saying every case, but I'm saying more more likely than not. But the way a black man's gonna fetishize over you, a white man is not gonna quite dote and fetishize and obsess like a black man will do for you initially. All that dopamine, all that excitement, all that being catered to, I'm sure he he love bombed her and I'm sure he meant it. He, he buried her. But then the reality of um, for her, the you know the 
the BBC gets old after a while. It's like, okay, I got the BBC. Okay. You're on tour for a month again. Okay. 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 Well, part of our culture and our family, we spend time at, and I'm sure he, he he got tired of doing that shit with that family all the time. I'm sure it was time when he was like, no, nah, I just want it to be us. We got to be with your family again. Or, you know, maybe they have the baby too soon because they needed to be together longer and have more time to get to know each other before they had the child. I wouldn't say they had the child too soon or not soon enough. It was not super fast, but within, what, a year meeting each other, got married. I could be wrong about that. But, um... I think it was some fetishizing going on on both sides and the reality hit I think it was very exciting I think it's it was intoxicating and then reality hit my husband is gone most of the time he's always but because if Jeezy don't travel Jeezy don't eat he can't feed that family he has to travel um, she can go on some of the tours they got a baby now so she can't show up she got her own businesses to run if if Jeezy was staying faithful the first year or so, that nature, if you've been out here doing stuff on tours, and your wife, if it's your, your wife and you stop for a while, that nature comes back out again. And she's not around, and she's not going to be around because she got the baby in her businesses. You naturally sometimes slip back into old habits. Jenny Mai is a person who struggled greatly growing up. Severe poverty. She said her dad sometimes he would eat the tra out the trash to make sure everybody else had food and whatever they threw away he would eat at the trash. When you've experienced that level of poverty, it's going to be a lot of times where you're where you're going to neglect your relationship and focus on business. Because if you've been starving and watched your own father eat at the trash to make sure y'all eat, it fucks you up in a way where it fucks you up. But Jenny Mai will never go hungry. Jenny Mai will never be without. And she'll always take care of her family. I believe she probably takes it too far. And over the course of that marriage, wasn't quite giving him his attention because she's so driven and focused, which can be good and bad, you know, of course. So it's sad to hear because in the end, this baby now is uh, part of a broken family. That sucks. The baby doesn't get to have mom and dad in the house, but it never was going to be that way because that guy tours too much because that's how he makes a living. A lot of rock stars, rappers, all those guys, it's really difficult to maintain marriages with those guys. Not necessarily because of them, but because of the reality of their job. And um, it's sad. I'm not excited. I'm like, oh, look, yeah, you got what you want. You said you always like dark me. That's sick. Y'all grow up. That's gross. It's a little baby now that doesn't have her mommy and daddy in the house. How could you be excited or be entertained by that? That's grow up. But um, yeah, it's sad. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm I'm biased because I like I like them both, and I'm just sad about it. I, I, I'm not excited. I don't feel like that's what you get. What the hell has Jenny Mai actually done to anybody? She said something stupid, like six years ago. It was stupid, but it was like six years ago. Damn, let that hurt go. That that girl doesn't deserve all the venom coming at her. And um, uh, it's gonna be interesting the next couple of days to watch all the auto black men that said, you know. Uh, all complimentary. They do not turn against black, black black men. Do not turn against each other. They are going to be watch online in the next few days. The black men going in on her and making her the problem. That's another thing you find out when you are a preference. When that situation ends, them niggas will turn on. <laughs> they treat you like us. <laughs> I shouldn't even be laughing about that. I didn't mean to laugh, but it is. She's gonna be real shocked to turn to find out all them niggas who was uh big up in her. They are going to turn on her because they do not go against each other. A lot of these bigger YouTubers, those uh, Manosphere guys, they're going to turn right on Jenny Mai. But um, who knows what's, what, what's next for both of them. God bless both of them, you know. Thank goodness they got money. They're not struggling. So the baby is loved. So, yeah, that's it. Sad to hear. That's it, y'all. Sorry, I, I don't do that. I don't got the negative... Uh, I'm not happy to hear uh, the end of somebody's marriage. That doesn't that doesn't excite me. Sorry, if you came for that, bye.